afternoon, folks, and welcome to a, another presentation webinar. Uh, we're going to cover today the SolidWorks inspection product, talk about how we can create inspection reports with speed and accuracy, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. So this is the typical image that we see when we start to talk to organizations about their process for creating first article inspection reports. Uh, we'll typically see a printed out drawing with manually created balloons on it, uh, whether they're using uh, tools to make the balloons uh, around like templates or uh, just manually drawing the balloons in so they're uh, hopefully legible enough. And then they're translating that data into some spreadsheet, which in a lot of cases is also printed out uh, and manually written into. Uh, and then these get filed away in, in a filing cabinet when the inspection is complete. So what we've seen is this is pretty much 85% of the SolidWorks customer base is doing this in a very manual way. There's a couple problems with this. Uh, if you're going back and forth between the drawing and the spreadsheet to transpose numbers, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for errors and inconsistencies in how people write and put that information on the spreadsheet. Uh, there's obviously a, t a time uh, sync to this. You know, going you know, a simple drawing of just 10, 15 dimensions may only take you uh, 15, 20 minutes, but if you get a drawing of 100 and 150 dimensions, uh, just ballooning it could take you half hour, 40 minutes, nonetheless moving all the information over to the spreadsheet, and that time is money. And then obviously quality. Um, if you're handing a TDP or technical data package to somebody else, and, uh, you know, it's, it's showing as a very manual process, uh, you know, the quality of that is, is uh, a little bit different than if we look at how we're going to show it today, which is automating the push of that data into Excel and having uh, proper balloons on the PDF and, and really showing a clear and precise process here. So this is a, a typical response that we might get from somebody in a quality department talking about the amount of time that it takes. And I'm sure everyone on this webinar uh, has their own story about how long it takes to create a first article inspection sheet and, and kind of how mundane that happens to be. What we're going to cover today is SolidWorks Inspection. SolidWorks Inspection is one software that has two separate interfaces that you will get access to. So a single license will include both of those interfaces. One of them is fully integrated into SOLIDWORKS as a SOLIDWORKS add-in. It will take advantage of SOLIDWORKS drawings and the intelligence of the cab to create the balloons and automatically export the inspection sheets. And we're going to show that today. The other part of that is a standalone application. The standalone application will also support SOLIDWORKS drawings, but PDFs and TIFF files as well. Uh, when I say support the SOLIDWORKS drawings, we're going to have the ability to go from the integrated version to the standalone version with an export, so it doesn't consume a SOLIDWORKS license if you don't desire. But the standalone application really supports any of the CAD programs that you create. And I say that meaning that we can take a PDF file out of AutoCAD, out of Inventor, Solid Edge, Pro E, any of those programs. All we need is a quality PDF to be able to get that information and extract it and still be much, much faster than if I were to manually balloon and create an inspection sheet. Okay, this uh, will tie in with your existing inspection documents. So we will take your existing templates that you have, whether they are uh, existing PPAP or AS9102 forms, uh, or if you have your own custom form, we can customize them to accept the data very easily. 
So how I'm going to present the software to you today is an example uh, from a large piece of equipment. There's a uh, essentially a knuckle that holds this arm, uh, some of the cylinders for the arm in place. And I want to kind of take you through what the life, day in the life would be like uh, if you were using the interface both in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, then I want to go into the PDF or TIFF file in the standalone. I want to talk a little bit about productivity tools, tools that you just may not think about that will just make that the quality of those reports so much more. Uh, and then we're going to talk about validation, you know, taking that one step further and looking at how we might enter in uh, measurement data and correlate the CMM data as well. So let's start with our SOLIDWORKS drawings. If we jump into SOLIDWORKS, the first thing you'll notice is a tab for SOLIDWORKS inspection. Because it's a SOLIDWORKS add-on, once it's turned on, it integrates itself into the command manager. You can see there's not a lot of uh, extra options here to work with. It's very easy to learn because there is so few options. And the reason for this is because it takes advantage of what you've already done within the CAD tool. It understands dimensions. It understands the tolerances, things like basic dimension, um, notes. It, it, it has information uh, because of the CAD tool that you won't necessarily have when we show you the PDF. First thing we want to do is create an inspection project. We have the ability to create templates for this inspection project. Now what that allows me to do is just set up some other predefined settings like uh, maybe vendors and inspection methods that I may call out, uh, as well as balloon size and fonts that may be available. Um, once I select the template, uh, the wizard kind of takes over here as I kind of just step through uh, the property manager pane by pane. And you'll notice it's integration. It's using the property manager. It's using the same interface and icons that we're used to inside of SOLIDWORKS today. So first thing I want to do is enter information about the project. Uh, this can be manually entered on the keyboard or by selecting the buttons we can get access to the custom properties that are stored in the files themselves. So I can grab part name, revision, part number, and automatically have that information available to me so that when I create the Excel inspection sheet, that information goes right along with it. I can tell it what number to start entering and creating balloons as characteristics, and I can even get it, give it some statistical sampling information like lot size, level, and acceptable quality limit. Again, just information that we can push into the Excel file if we want to. Now, because we have SOLIDWORKS behind the scenes, as I mentioned, we now can specify what it is I'm going to extract from the drawing. Now, when I extract something from the drawing, it's really just me picking the things that we're going to inspect to. And we have the ability to grab inspection dimensions off the SOLIDWORKS drawing, secondary units, we can grab notes in a certain way, even GD&T hole callouts, welds, and surface finish. You control what gets extracted and how quickly. When I hit next, I can also control uh, what happens for dimensions that do not have tolerances. So both the linear and angular uh, tolerance scheme, which is typically called out on the title block, we can specify that here by precision or by range. Once I've completed the initial settings, you'll notice that the software takes over and extracts all the items that I specified. Now compare that process to just simply ballooning this manually on a piece of paper. Now here's where it starts to break apart from the manual process even more. I'm sitting here and I'm able to see uh, which items were extracted from which view. And I could go to the view, for instance, this section view here, uh, you can see D1 uh, currently is not selected to be uh, part of the inspection sheet. I can actually turn that on 
and the software will automatically renumber the balloons to keep them in the proper order. If I wanted to take an existing dimension and turn it off, I certainly could do that. And again, it will reorder that information for me. Now, some of that, it might be in the form of notes. Notes are automatically created with uh, balloons with sub numbers in them, so a dot number. Um, we also have a tool that will allow me to come in here and determine if they're, if I want to break the note out into multiple inspection balloons, so what we call an explode note. Now, for each characteristic that we extract from the drawing, uh, the bottom half is some extra property information we can uh, also include with this. Things like, is it a, a key dimension? Is it a reference dimension? Which will automatically be picked up if it's set as reference in SOLIDWORKS. I can type in some extra comments about this particular dimension. It fills out where on the sheet it is, what's, what view it belonged to. Uh, and then a few other things. They have uh, inspection method. I mentioned at the beginning some of the settings you can set up with the template. This is how we can set up a list of all the items that we might use to inspect this particular uh, dimension. So in this case, you can select things like a uh, bore gauge, and that will be information we can export to the sheet. Now, once we've gone through our specification tree and turned on and off any of the items, I certainly could go to the, the uh, graphics area, maybe move a few balloons around to get them exactly where I want them. The position of balloons uh, is dictated specifically uh, by a, a positioning option in the template that says, hey, put it to the left this distance away from the characteristic. But I can go ahead and move and adjust those as needed. Now, once I have that, uh, SOLIDWORKS goes ahead and places all those balloons on a layer for me. So if I go ahead and uh, turn on my layer toolbar here and just look at the layer, okay, you'll notice in the layer dialog that all my balloons uh, are listed on this layer and I can turn them on, turn them off as needed. So it really does a nice job organizing that data for me and putting it in the right spot. The end result is I need to export out uh, the information, maybe first of all to a PDF. Uh, I can create a, a ballooned PDF, give it a name here, and save it, and it will create the PDF file, and then I have export to Excel. Uh, my Excel spreadsheet is nothing more than a template, like the templates we talked about. Um, your internal templates that are set up to accept all this information. Now the software comes with traditional AS9102 or PPAP forms, but in most cases you'll take your existing form and we'll just customize it to accept the data. When I say customize, we're talking about minutes. Uh, it's something you can do or we can do to help you out. The result is all this information is going to be exported, sorry, export it out into Excel, and here is the result uh, automatically pushed out into Excel. Things like upper lower limits, nominal information, as well as the initial requirement. Notice also that the, uh, the tooling or an inspection tooling that we're going to use is also pushed. This is what I meant by bringing that information in. Okay. So that's the SOLIDWORKS drawing. Let's talk about a little bit of the benefits. Obviously, the seamless integration, very, very simple workflow. If you're a SOLIDWORKS user and you have a SOLIDWORKS drawing, uh, very little to no training to get this thing up and running. Uh, automating the drawing and report creation process. It'll handle revisions effortlessly. I did not show this, but if you were to open the drawing and there are new dimensions added to that particular inspection document, it will actually show up in a different color and you can add and remove those, which will then re-balloon the drawing very, very quickly. Eliminate errors, you're not worried about drawing in or typing in the, the correct number, and obviously you're gonna reduce your time uh, by using this. 
if you wanted to, you could export this project to the standalone, which I'm going to show here in just a moment, what the benefits of that standalone application are. Now, if you don't have the benefit of SOLIDWORKS, you're typically getting PDF or TIFF files from your customers. Now, the, the issue with a PDF or TIFF file is it really is a, a glorified image. It's made up of pixels uh, that can be of good quality or bad quality. But we need a way, again, of keeping the, the speed and quality up on these inspection reports. That's where the standalone tool comes into play. Let's take a look at the standalone. So the standalone does not require SOLIDWORKS. As I mentioned, the license for this is included uh, in the license of inspection because you'll get both. Now, first thing you're going to do is create a new project. Same kind of process that we talked about in the add-in and that I have to select a template which has just some predefined settings. Now, the template in the standalone is a little different because we don't have balloons that are already defined in SOLIDWORKS. We don't have dimensions and tolerances that are already defined in SOLIDWORKS. This is really going to be a pretty picture. So this template stores a lot more information about the project and it helps you to really get things going. All I have to do is uh, feed it a PDF file and I'm ready to get going. Now what you're seeing here uh, is a very simple interface with something just like the command manager where we have tabs that contain the information uh, to kind of get going uh, by extracting the, the views here. Um, first thing it's going to ask me to do is extract project properties, just like we did in the add-in. I needed part name, part number, part revision. In this case, that information does exist on the title block of the drawing except this is a picture. Well, I could come over here and type in boom knuckle, right? That's very uh, much like the, your manual process today. Or if I hit these little buttons, it activates something we call optical character recognition. Optical character re recognition, when on, only requires you to create a box over the information you want it to recognize. When you create the box over that information, it's going to go ahead and extract that information into the field. So things like part revision, part name, notes, dimensions, uh, all that stuff can be extracted into that those fields. Now there are other property information that can be extracted as well. These fields are customizable. These are maybe company specific or vendor specific information that you may extract. Now once you have that, it's really at this point that you start extracting the information off the drawing. And you do that through a series of tools for extracting specific types of information, like dimensions, GD&T, notes, surface finish, weld, or other. At any point in time, you can also add drawings or remove drawings. So if you have a multi-sheet multi TDP that you need to get out, uh, you can certainly do that. So my job is to basically work through the drawing and extract the items that I want. I'm going to start with dimensions. All I have to do is mouse over and create a box around what I want it to recognize. The software is going to automatically create and take a picture of the area that I windowed over. Now on top of that, at the bottom, you'll notice it's able to understand what it is, it's a dimension, what type of dimension it is, the units that we're working in, quantities, so there, if there's a, a multiple quantity list, listed there, it would show. It pulls the nominal value, also the tolerance right from the dimension itself, and then it calculates the upper and lower limits. A little bit further down, we can also control some of the stuff that I showed you in the add-in, like uh, what is the inspection method? Okay, maybe this is for the CMM. We can control the balloon separately. So the border, the color, the fill, the text size, is there a leader, and where is it located uh, on the dimension? I can change that individually if I wanted to. Now you'll notice at the bottom part of the interface something we call the table manager. And in the table manager, you'll have what we call the bill of characteristics. 
This is where that information goes uh, as I extract it. So you really are going to kind of look like this. You're going to kind of be working your way around the drawing to extract the items that you want. You may be uh, going between uh, dimensions and GD and T, but you're just kind of working your way through. You're not really looking at what it's, what's extracted and how well it extracted it, but you're just kind of working your way around the drawing at this point. And it's filling up the bill of characteristics. Now, you can always go back and look and make sure that what it found is what, it, what you would expect by just going to this characteristic tree. And you can see, uh, you know, here's a diameter dimension, plus minus recognized properly. And you can kind of work your way through to see and locate uh, to make sure that everything was recognized properly. When it comes to gd &T, we just have a different extraction tool here. Uh, we can go ahead and window over the gd &T. Uh, It will say just C print for GTAL, or we do have the ability to recreate the frame directly in here as well. So recreating the frame is interesting because once it's recreated, we are going to have the ability to push this into Excel as a font. So it'll actually show up almost like type text within the uh, Excel file when you export it. Now again, when you compare this OCR capability with manually doing it, you're still so much faster. For one reason that I've noticed real quick is just, just the simple fact that it takes the image that we have. When it takes the image, it's right there in front of you, so you're not looking to the right, looking to the left, going from the drawing to the Excel spreadsheet. So verifying that what it captured is correct is very, very simple. Okay. Now, again, with this tool, when you're completed with extracting your dimensions, all you have to do is export to PDF or export to Excel. The same thing happens here. Uh, when you go to export the information, all you're doing is selecting the uh, report, that we want to use. It's just an Excel template and you're selecting export and only the information that I want it to be exported will be exported. Notice the CMM and the information that I extracted. Here's what I meant by the font of the frame actually being recreated with the exception of saying C note for GTAL. So the standalone tool is very powerful. Uh, the OCR um, what you saw was it extracting from a PDF. Um, sometimes you'll get drawn, hand-drawn drawings where the PDF uh, is a little bit different. Uh, we do have tools for learning how to recognize that stuff, but it can certainly speed up your drawing creation. It supports scan documents created from any CAD system. Um, we can leverage that supplier data improve the quality, reduce errors, and time to market. Okay. Now let's talk about productivity tools that the standalone does offer as well. So let's go back to that just for a moment. All right. And one of the things that uh, you like to do when you get a really busy drawing is to actually create a grid. Now I'm going to just zoom out a little bit here so we can see the whole thing, so we can understand what's happening. Uh, but if I add a grid to the system here, I can control uh, the number of columns and rows and how the grid is labeled. But essentially what I'm doing here by creating the grid is I'm automatically filling out the character zone information. So when you have a really busy drawing of 150 dimensions, this is a great way to provide a little extra quality to that information. So I can have a user be able to easily see the area of the drawing in which a dimension is going to be. Again, making it easier now to inspect on the back end of this thing. Another tool that we use quite often uh, is the ability to hide things that we've already extracted. Sometimes when you have a really busy drawing, you're not really sure what you've already extracted. So we have a button called Hide Captures, which will hide everything you've already done 
and allow you to go back and grab the things that you're missing. We also have the ability uh, in the table manager at the bottom here uh, to do things like grouping dimensions together. I can sort on this table, maybe only export all the CMM data. Um, there's a lot of functionality built into this. Okay. Now, the issue typically comes from when the user now, after creating the initial inspection report, gets a new revision from the vendor or customer. Now, typically this process is started over completely at this point. Well, in this case, all we have to do is use our compare tools. In our compare tools, we can select the latest version of the PDF. The software is going to automatically overlay the two PDFs on top of each other, with the green being the new items, the red being the existing. And I'm able to see in this graphical input if there is anything new or changed or moved even from what was there before. You can see off to the right on this view that these two off to the right are new. They're green. When I say replace, it will actually replace the items. And now all I have to do is extract the dimensions that were added to this list. Okay. So there is a way of not having to redo everything. Okay. Now these productivity tools... Uh, of hiding and showing the characteristics, those again are just to help you make, make it even faster uh, to work with this. We also have the ability to extract the BOM. If you have uh, traditional AS9102 requirements where you need to uh, show the BOM in the uh, inspection package, uh, we can either pull that in from SOLIDWORKS from a CSV, uh, something that's typed in maybe to a business system, or if there's a sheet on the drawing that shows the bill of material, um, we can also extract that directly from that PDF file. The ability to compare and replace with new revisions uh, will make it easier as things change over time. And then the filtering options allow you to take the items that were extracted and choose what information is going to go to that Excel file. Now the last part of this is all about the next step in the process. I've created my first article inspection report. I've handed it to the inspection team and they're going to get going. They now know what the dimension looks like, the upper and lower living. They have all the information that I need them to have, including the tools that are to be used to inspect. So how do they go about validating what they have is correct? Now inside of the standalone application, we have the ability to have measurement input. Now what this does, it kind of splits into some other panes here. Uh, one of those panes is for measurement input. Now this can be tied to uh, a pair of digital calipers. So this is uh, just like, ex like an Excel spreadsheet. So if you are measuring this with digital calipers, I can add a column where I can just hit the button on the calipers and the dimensional data will automatically be extracted in here. Now all I would have to do is let's say I typed in a value or I extracted a value, the software is going to automatically color code it or validate it to ensure whether it was good or bad based upon the tolerance and the nominal values that you've already extracted. Now if I get this uh, in range, you'll notice it'll be green showing me I have everything I need. So this is a, a manual measurement input unless you have calipers. I'm going to just delete that for a second and talk about the correlation with CMM data. Now sometimes after this thing is measured up you have data from the CMM typically in a text format and it's up to a user to type in all that CMM data again into the Excel file and then compare it to the uh, maybe the original uh, nominal dimension and tolerance to see if it's good or bad. Now over time, over multiple dimensions or multiple part measurements, uh, it's kind of hard to get a look at really what's going on with the part, if there's a, a manufacturing problem. So what we do 
is we allow you to bring in that measurement data. Now by bringing in that data, it's able to parse the text file for the, the nominal information, the plus minus, and the measurement data. Um, our job is to correlate this with what I've already extracted. The nice thing is we have a button here that will allow me to correlate it based upon nominal and plus minus. When I accept this, it brings in the CMM results and it correlates the data directly to the things and items I've already extracted. And you'll notice that it also color codes them. At this point, I could go ahead and export once again to Excel and I can choose which template I want to export to and you'll notice even the correlation data also goes with it. So this information, the, the green, the, the red, the yellow uh, can be set up to also go directly to the template as well. So again, and you look at the quality of your reports, what your customers are going to see, what your vendor is going to see, uh, and what your users internally are going to see. Uh, it's kind of uh, in a different world than the manual process. So we can streamline the process, integration with common measurement tools, uh, go, no go, feedback, import of that CMM results, and create detailed reports. So some key features and benefits. What we're typically seeing for inspection documents is time savings up to 90%. If you're a SOLIDWORKS user and you have access to SOLIDWORKS, this is going to be the fastest method if you have that SOLIDWORKS drawing. Little to no training, we can teach you both of these tools in just a few hours. Okay. Now, the standalone is going to meet your conditions regardless of what CAD you're doing. PDF and TIFF files, but it's still going to be very, very much faster than the manual process, as well as much more accurate. So two things I want you to think about is improving the time to create your first article inspection reports, eliminating those errors and inconsistencies. We also have some integrations to be able to export out XML data to other quality systems. So if you have a, a, a system that will do uh, some statistical analysis over the long term of how various lots have been looking maybe over the last year or multiple weeks, uh, we can export the measurement data and the result data uh, to an XML for that to be read in. We also have integrations with a couple uh, net-based tools, NetInspect and Quality Export, where we can take it directly into those. The measurement data from the CMM, uh, the import results, the example I used was PC Demus, but we have uh, imported result uh, templates for many of the major manufacturers, and if it's not there, it's very easily to easy to create. We're basically telling it how to go into the text file and find the data that you're looking for. So if, if we look at, uh, you know, what can be expected here, um, you know, we're talking taking hours that you had before to create an inspection report and taking that down to minutes. And that is absolutely a realistic um, realistic result of investing in a tool like this. Okay, I want to thank you for attending today. Uh, I did put my email here at the bottom. Uh, I'm sure that some of our folks will reach out and just get an idea of uh, what you thought of the presentation today. Uh, if you have any further questions, please post them in the question section of the GoToWebinar. And thank you for attending. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.